What's going on, y'all? So lit. What's going on, y'all? So we are back for another. I was about to say an episode review. We are back for another what it is video. I literally just got back in the house from work. So if I don't have the energy, baby, let me tell you something. I need to get a car. Okay, I need to get my license. I need to do this because these damn Lyft drivers, these Uber drivers, motherfucker almost got us hit by ambulance. Like, bitch, I can see the flashing lights. I can hear the flashing lights. You see everybody else going over to the side because that motherfucker is coming close. And you just going to keep on going so you can get us hit. You just, like, these, they, they just don't care about the fact that they got me in the backseat of this car. Like, how do you do your other passengers? You know, I have an experience just about every freaking day with them. You know, it is what it is. Ash, to get your shit together. Okay, but let's just get into this video. Because I do got some things, you know, got little notes and stuff. Okay, I hope everybody has had such a beautiful week. Um, I know it's been raining. I hope everybody who's affected by Hurricane Michael have got out of it, got out of it on the good foot, meaning that they still have their life. And, you know, because I know the death toll have risen and, you know, um, people, material things are material things. You can always replace material things as long as you got your family and you got your life and your friends. You should be good. You know, so I still put my prayers out to everyone who's affected by all of these hurricanes and natural disasters that's been happening recently, you know. Um, let's just get into this video now that we got that out the way. So, um, I'm just going to go down my list. No particular order. Cassie and Diddy broke up, okay. Cassie and Diddy been together for, what, 10, 11 years, and... You know, am I surprised that they broke up somewhat? But then again, I'm not because at this point, I don't know if Cassie is the type of woman who wants to get married and have kids and things of that such. But I know for a fact that, what the fuck is this on my face? Oh, that's water. I know for a fact that Diddy don't want to get married and he probably don't want no more kids, you know. And um, he's, all, he's never been that type that look for marriage and anything like that and... He still seemed like the playboy type. You got people who have good women and good men in their lives and, you know, they still got to fuck around and still feel like they missing something. I don't know if it was, you know, on her part, which it seems more likely that it is because he's uh, it, uh, apparently he's already moved on to some girl named Jocelyn or whatever, allegedly. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but Cassie would be all right. You know, I hope she did what Medea say, baby, do the little bird thing, take something from the nest, put it to the side, keep doing that, keep doing that, build your nest on the other end, okay, and have you something good, she'll be all right, you know, um, you just have to know your worth. Ladies, how long would you stay in a relationship with a man or a woman, who, whichever you prefer, my men too, okay, and do you go into a relationship expecting it to just be a relationship, we're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend all the time because not everybody wants to get married or do you expect the ring to come soon and when do you expect that ring to come and how long are you willing to wait and stay in a relationship? And if you are in a relationship with someone that you know that is not going to get married, don't want marriage, how long would you stay or why would you continue to stay with that person? Put that down in the comments. Bitch, we're going to have to have a comment section, you know, a what would you do type of or, you know, shit like that each episode, each um video for what it is. So if you got some questions, put it down in the comments so I can ask them and we can just do it and have a little talk amongst ourselves. You know, I like when we do this because some of y'all give some really, really interesting perspectives on things and I'd be like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. And it's really good, you know. Um, shout out to y'all too. So, in the world of fucked upness, in the world of doing anything while black, okay, we can't even go to our own apartments while black, all right? There's this guy in St. Louis, Louis uh, Missouri, who, you know, Darian, I hope I'm saying his name right, Darian Tolls. He was trying to get into his apartment, and this white girl, Hillary, okay, she fucked around and tried to block him. And he was filming the whole thing. And, you know, you can't mind your business and just go ahead and walk your dog and all that stuff or whatever. Let your dog shit and piss or whatever he had to do. 
but you had to go bother this black man and then want to say that she's not racist because of the simple fact that she's still technically legally married to a black man. But that black man came out and said that he disapproved of what she did. Okay. And this is goes to show when people say the stupid rhetoric of and asking the stupid question of how can someone be racist if they're married to, how can a white person or whoever be racist if they're married to somebody that's black or, or another race or whatever? This is a case, okay? How can somebody be with somebody, go have sex with somebody, and they claim to be racist against them? It happens all the time. Main example, slavery, okay? That shit been passed down, been passed down, been passed down, you know, and I just don't understand that, you know, we can't even go to our own apartment complex without fear of somebody trying to stop us, without fear of somebody busting in and just, you know, killing us on the spot just because of our skin color. It's fucked up. There was no reason for her to do that, and you wound up getting yourself shot. And, I mean, not shot, but fired. My whole thing is, we have so many cases of this being filmed and putting out on the internet. Why won't these bitches wake up and just understand Mind your own business and you will be all right. We're not the ones that's getting fucked up. You're the one that's fucking yourself up, okay? Maybe you was ready to quit that job and you couldn't, you was just didn't have the balls enough to quit your job. So you said, let me do some ignorant shit so that it can go viral and they can fire me, okay? That's what it seemed like you, these motherfuckers doing because I just don't understand the logic of how come you can't mind your own business, okay? Then you have... This um lady, what's her name? Teresa Klein. She's out there in New York. She was at a bodega. She was leaning over the counter. This little boy and his mama walked past. He ain't paying no attention to this lady. I'm looking at the surveillance camera. That boy went straight out. Hand didn't go like this. Hand didn't go like that. That motherfucker went straight out. He was tunnel vision, walking with his mama, okay? Nine-year-old boy. I think his name is Jeremiah. This lady threw a fit, talking about some call the cops, at this nine-year-old boy because saying that he groped her ass, okay? Little kids grope my ass all the time, so I'm just tired of it, so I just called the cops or whatever. He did this and all this shit. Made the little boy cry. This boy and sister, they sitting out there crying because you're embarrassing them, you're humiliating them, and you're making him, uh, accusing him of something that he did not do. Now, when they came through at the bodega and they showed the video camera, the videotape, she didn't see it. And she was like, you know, I don't believe it because I didn't see it or whatever. He still groped me and all this stuff. They made that bitch stand there in that goddamn bodega with all these people around filming her watch the damn video girl fuck your apology okay that little boy said fuck your apology he, she ain't say that but he said he don't forgive her and that you know she needs some help she probably got something wrong with her she probably got a mental illness i said look at little shawty all right <laughs> he was cute he was cute with it because uh bitch i would have went in okay but you once again making yourself look dumb as fuck and these people just really don't care I just, I, I wish somebody would. Anyway, y'all tell me how y'all feel about that. So, music news, new music alert, new music alert. I told you guys I'm going to try to do this um, each what it is video, some of the music that I'm listening to, some of the music that I got put up on. Thank you guys for most of the suggestions that y'all put out there. I got a lot of music to listen to and check out. Um, Mariah Carey, she's still releasing singles here and there. Uh, I didn't necessarily listen to the with you or whatever, besides when she performed it on the AMAs. It's cute. I would not have it as a main single because it's kind of forgettable because I don't even remember how it sound. You know, I have to go back and listen to it. You know, I like get the fuck out. I really do like get the fuck out. You do just get the fuck out. I love when she said it like that. I just don't understand why her voice so damn small on there. Like, what, 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 what type of instrument is you using to make her voice like that? But whatever. Um, and she also has a new one out called The Distance featuring Ty Dolla Sign. I actually like it. It's cute. It's nothing that I'd be like, oh, bitch, but it's cute. I really do like it. Uh, I could have did without Ty Dolla Sign, but, you know, I'm, I'm actually anticipating, looking forward to Mariah Carey's new album's called Caution, um, and it's coming out November 16th, you know, so hopefully she's on Rock Nation, they do it well, and, you know, she has another number one album on her hand, hopefully, um, 
Solange is dropping the album soon. They said it's coming out in fall. Baby, we are in fall, so that shit can drop anytime. She just like us as the bitch. We ain't giving no dates. Okay, we just gonna drop a bitch. Okay, that's the new thing. Everybody has been dropping albums left and right or EPs and giving no regards. Like, bitch, can we get a heads up? Okay, Future dropped the album. I don't give a shit. Uh, Anne Marie dropped uh, two double disc whatever EP. One has seven songs on it. It's called 4 a.m. Mahalan. And then the other one has six songs and it's called After 4 a.m. And let me just say this. For somebody who has not been out that long uh, in a minute, this is not what you come back with. Okay. I know things changes in your life. You have kids and all this stuff. Sometimes that change your voice. But I didn't understand... I didn't like, I really did not like 4 a.m. Mahalan, okay? For the simple fact that it literally sounds like she's going down a tunnel, singing in a fan with her head stuck out the window and on one note. One damn note. I don't understand. I said, what is this auto-tune? What is this? I don't like music like that, okay? It's cute to have one or two music. That's why I can't get into Jean, uh, Janine Aika like that because she make that sleepy type music too. Um, I, I, I don't want to be depressed when I listen to you, okay? I want to have some box. I will say the four, after 4 a.m., you know, she did have much more of a variety of melodies and stuff on their uh, mid-tempos, up-tempos, whatever. I still didn't like it. I still didn't like it. Um, but y'all tell me how y'all felt about that. Um, what else is going on? Rihanna was supposed to be in the Super Bowl, okay? We've been complaining about how Rihanna, you know, they need to give her the Super Bowl and all this stuff. Rihanna was apparently, allegedly, uh, Rihanna was, you know, asked to do the Super Bowl halftime, and she rejected it because she's standing with Colin Kaepernick. I said, way to go, sis. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not even mad at that. I'm not even mad at that. Would I have liked to see Rihanna do the Super Bowl halftime? Yes, I would have. But, you know, given her stance, I can I can stand by that. I can stand by that. Um, Drake. So I don't know if you guys have been looking at, I wish it was a weekly thing. I thought it was going to be a weekly thing. HBO Sports got this show with LeBron James called The Shop. And it's basically a lot of sports stars um, from all ranks of the field of sports entertainment coming through and, you know, giving their perspectives on things like, and they're in the barber shop, you know, just like niggas go to a barber shop or women go to a hair salon and we just talk and shoot the breeze and all that stuff. And they're giving a lot of things. And it was, I liked the first episode. I was like, when is the second episode coming? I thought it was going to be a weekly thing, but it wasn't. And then the second episode finally premiered, I think last week. And you know, Drake was on there and he was discussing the whole thing with the Pusha T and the Kanye West um, beef and how, you know, he, at this point, he gave the explanation that Kanye basically played him, okay? Kanye, you know, sucked up to him, made him feel easy with him, and then basically went behind his back and was manipulating the situation and played him, especially when it came to when his album was coming out. And how, you know, he showed him his um son and all this stuff. And next thing you know, he played him that March 14th record. And then the album started coming out around June dates and stuff like that. Knowing that this is where he was going to be having his album come out. And, um you know, saying that he could, he wrote, he did have a diss song. But he said it wouldn't, that this song that we have not heard. He said it wouldn't be him. He wouldn't be able to look himself or whatever. My whole thing is... Drop the shit, okay? Because Pusha T comes out and he was on Joe Budden um podcast or Everyday Struggle, whatever it is, and he basically said that it wasn't Kanye or anybody else who told him. It was either Forty, who was um Drake's dude, or one of Forty's bit uh chicks that he was fucking around with, who told him about Push uh, uh Drake's baby when he was born or some shit like that. My thing of it is, and I will continue to say this. I've been new about. How come don't nobody remember this whole situation about this baby mama coming out? It was two girls at the same time, and Drake's real baby mama came out first, okay? She came out first. She had the picture. She had all of that stuff. The other girl, the black girl, she came out, and it was a complete lie. She wasn't making sense with her stories or whatever. That's why Drake is suing her, 
okay? I said this was on the shade room at one point. You know, I seen it at other blogs and I guess people just completely forget that. You know, maybe they don't follow shit like that. So, hey, it is what it is. At this point in time, I just want them to drop the, a diss track, or the diss track, okay? I just want to hear that tape to see exactly somebody leak it. I mean, if it's really out there, somebody leak it, okay? Because that's all. And if you're not going to do that, I don't want to hear nothing else about it, okay? Because I'm bored with the whole thing. I'm bored with the whole thing. You got your son. Worry about him. Push her. Don't nobody care. You know, do what you do. I'm really upset with good music because of the way they did Tiana Taylor, but fuck that. Fuck that. You know, worry about the business, okay? Let this shit go. Move on. Move on, all right? Because ain't nothing going to change. And Drake. Ain't no rules to this fucking beef shit, okay? I'm just gonna tell you that. Quit putting out there, y'all new niggas sensitive or whatever because ain't no rules to this shit. You can't go around talking about another man's, you know, mental illness and all this stuff and then getting your feelings when somebody want to come at you with some shit too. Like, come on, you know? You did that to Kid Cudi. You did other stuff as well. Sometimes you hit below the belt and it is what it is. This is a battle, you know? That's what you try to do. You try to hurt your opponent lyrically, okay? You bring up shit and all this stuff so that's why i said it was a pussy move if you ask me for you not uh releasing that diss track but okay it is what it is um she basharay <laughs> sheree whitfield formerly a real housewives of atlanta mama was on instagram and twitter talking about some you know, are y'all ready for the launch of, you know, come celebrate? She, it was like a flyer or whatever. That's how she was making it seem as if it was about to be some actual fashions on her website. She didn't say come celebrate the launch of She Bachelorette. No, it's the launch of the goddamn website. Do not do no shit like this, okay? Baby, anybody can go on Foursquare and make a, uh, 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 a website, go on Wix, make a website, go on wherever it is that they can to make a website on their own. And, um, you know, don't do no shit like this. You gonna put a website out there, you want me to uh, come celebrate and help you out and see what it's all about and not talk shit. Have it all the way together. Have items that I want to pick up and um put into the actual cart that you got on there. Don't let me click on, oh, it say buy tees. It ain't nothing there. Because before, it was some stuff there. You had these basic ass t-shirts for $85 for legacy. And girl, ain't nobody finna pay that money for that. Where's the fucking joggers? There was nothing on that website. Okay? Like, come on, Sheree. You know, you gotta do better. Like Dwight said, how you gonna have a fashion show with no fashion? You got a fashion website with no fucking fashion once again you're making yourself look dumb okay girl get your shit together so the next thing that was going on big topic that happened i think it happened actually after we put up what it is that friday or saturday either way it happened right after i put the video up the ladies of the real okay they went on a breakfast club and you know jenny Meyer was actually i think the actual episode that they was talking about where she kind of, I don't know if she really would say that he cheated her ex-husband, but they were talking about how, you know, the ladies were with her and her friends and stuff was just like, uh, he pregnant with this girl, they pregnant, whatever, shit just ain't adding up. So that means that he had to been cheating or she was already in the picture, whatever. And so she didn't necessarily come out her mouth and say that she was cheating, but, um, Saying that, you know, she had a little breakdown on the show talking about their finances and how, you know, you never know who a real person is until they don't get what they want. And I said, that's kind of fucked up. You know, I wasn't expecting all that, but she was like, boo hoo tearing. Um, but on the real, uh, on, on the Breakfast Club, they was actually talking about, I think it was Charlemagne who brought it up. One of them brought it up, not the ladies of the real, okay? One of them brought it up. And said, so what exactly happened with this Tamar situation and her leaving? Okay, from the real. Everybody knows that whole situation. And I feel like the ladies of the real got the brunt of a, the brunt end of the stick. Because they got the rough end of it and the fucked up parts of it. Because you have stands that don't know anything that's going on. And actual public opinion coming through and no one is trying to get to the facts of the matter they instantly want to do the blame game blame this blame that 
and they want to blame the ladies of the real. Not realizing and understanding that those girls were never in the position to get anybody fired because they didn't have that type of power and they still don't at this point. They probably got a little bit more now, okay, because they're in the game, but they don't have that power, especially when they was just starting off and trying to get their footing because they didn't even know if they was going to come back for another season, even though the show is getting renewed and renewed and renewed and it's doing actually well, okay? Budget then came through, sets all for, uh, uh, fixed up and everything. Thing. they giving away money and shit i said oh y'all making money now fuck a fifth member okay y'all keep it at the four you know and so at this point lonnie just begins to start saying okay this is the elephant in the room let me just say this and let me say that she basically said that you know tamar had came to her asking her about you know looking into this dude who used to be a manager for steve harvey because she was looking for new management and, you know, next thing you know, they all weren't even there. And they found out through the internet and everything else that Tamar had got fired. Okay. We know the whole story. If you saw the um, the Breakfast Club interview, Lonnie broke it down. Now, nowhere in that whole thing was she anybody being disrespectful to Tamar. No one said nothing negative about Tamar. No one was being shady to Tamar. In actuality, what it sounded like to me, that they still want to be cool with Tamar, okay? And Tawanda, I like Tawanda, okay? You know, she follows me. I follow her. She likes my stuff on Instagram all the time. And to be quite honest, Tawanda, you be liking the shadiest shit that I be posting. And sometimes... Okay, so, you know, I am I was just a little bit confused about, you know, um, her coming out with this post because Lonnie had said that she had ran into Tawanda on a flight to Atlanta on um, first class and she said, you know, she was apologizing about everything that was going on and how the ladies were getting the brunt of it and how especially Lonnie was getting most of the hate from the fans and stuff and the narrative that was being put out there and... She was like, they was doing a special filming of um, Braxton Family Values that you need to see. And Lonnie had somebody that works at WeTV as well. And she saw that they was going to, you know, they said that Vince was saying things about them and trying to say that Lonnie was a hater and jealous and all this stuff, which I don't see, you know. And she said, basically, if you put our names in there, we're going to sue. So they had to retract their names and retract that footage or whatever. They couldn't film that. And... What people don't understand is the reason why, main reason why Tamar got fired was because of Vince. And everybody want to keep on, um, you know, skipping over that part, okay? Skipping over that part. Yeah, her personality could have had something to do with it, but that's also the reason why they brought her onto the show. Or whatever she was doing behind the stage, I don't know. But mainly what she got fired for was because of the shit that was going on with Vince and what he was doing. He was doing shady shit behind the scenes. Lonnie damn near confirmed that shit on the goddamn show too, on the real, okay? Um. Uh, on the breakfast club, I should say. And so for Tawana to come out there, basically getting all huff and puff and coming for Lonnie, trying to make it seem as if Lonnie was trying to twist the truth or whatever, you had a conversation. And then trying to make it seem as if they keep Tamar name in their mouths or whatever, and that wasn't even the case. I said, I don't follow Lonnie. I don't follow none of the ladies outside of the real. I watch the show. Okay, I record the shows. I watch it when I come home. It's, you know, um, background noise sometimes. Sometimes, and I've noticed that they've been getting better with their interviewing. They've been getting better guests and everything. And they just upgraded, okay? So I can't really hate, you know. I still get annoyed with Adrian. She just annoys the fuck out of me. Tamara will start crying in a second, but she hasn't been crying that much this season. You know, Jeannie Mai, she can be loud as shit, but it's whatever. I learned just to tune this shit out. But... Uh, and, and Lonnie can make some lame jokes, but whatever. None of them girls, ever since this whole situation happened with Tamar firing, from that next, that very day that they came back after it happened, they mentioned it that one time, and that was it. They never said anything else about Tamar. Well, when her divorce happened, they did wish her best of luck and all that stuff, and that was it. It was no shade. It was no being petty. 
if anything, you know, Tawanda made it sound as if, you know, they was on the show and they always talking about what Tamar do and talking about her, you know, drama and all that stuff. And they completely avoid it. And I watched every episode, okay? And they never talk about that girl like that. They don't even mention her at all, okay? Even when she's making headline news, they don't mention her. So I was confused where Tawanda is coming from with this and talking about something. Maybe you should have her on the show or whatever. Like, it just... I said, what is this misplaced anger that you're coming out? You know, is it because, and a lot of people were saying, and even me, is it because you're trying to have your sister back now because the fans and, you know, public opinion and shit has pit y'all together and make it seem as if you always hate on her or whatever, something like that? I don't know. I don't know, but it's not making sense. It really wasn't. It really wasn't making sense to me where it was coming from because I didn't see the shade. I didn't see the disrespect. No one said anything negative about Tamar. Actually, they were just offering, you know, um, luck and all that stuff. They wasn't saying nothing negative. And you cannot get upset at them for answering a question that was accident. Yeah, they could have said no comment, but they want to be real. They finally, I mean... If this is the moment where they finally want to say what their side was because they never gave it, let them. Tamar has been out here ever since the whole shit happened. I mean, she I don't know if she's saying anything now. I don't follow her. Um, but she has in multiple times given her own side about what happened. So they they can't say nothing. They can't say nothing. And yes, it's old news, but they were not the ones who brought it up. The Breakfast Club brought it up. So don't make it seem like they're harping on this. They've been moved on, okay? And I'm pretty sure Tamar has moved on too, all right? So when some controversy like this happened, of course that's going to be a main thing. You know, the last time y'all came up here, it was five of y'all. Now it's four of y'all. So we're going to have to discuss this, you know? And yeah, like I said, they could have said no comment. But hey, maybe this was the time that they really wanted to get the shit off their chest and really be done with it and move the fuck on it really wasn't that deep okay it was not that deep you know now i just you know people just like to make a mountain out of my old hill i don't understand it so moving on from that we got this whole thing with um ti ti put out this video for one of his songs um and he basically is the president in the over office getting a lap dance from a melania trump lookalike and of course this is what <laughs> Melania and them choose to focus on. They get in their feelings, of course, and then they want the, um to boycott uh T.I. I said, baby, that shit ain't going to happen, okay? we that, That's not going to happen. And they said the girl that was doing it, she's getting death threats and stuff like that. I said, child, this what y'all choose to um, focus on. But okay, whatever. Tommy got arrested from Love and Hip Hop. Just take the kids away. How do you go to somebody's school, your own daughter's school, and bash her head through a locker and then get arrested and then you're not supposed to have any communication with her and then get arrested 24 hours later after that because you tried to have communication with her? She needs help, okay? She needs help. And the last thing I want to talk about is Orange is the New Black is coming to an end next season. I haven't even watched this season. I just have not been interested in watching it, but I'm not surprised that it's coming to an end. But... Y'all tell me how y'all feel. I have to watch House on Haunted Hill. I have to watch um, Making a Murder Part 2. Um, I have to watch Big Mouth. It's a whole bunch of stuff on Netflix that's popping up left and right. I still have yet to finish cleaning out my DVR from the new shit. Okay, but y'all tell me what y'all watching, what y'all listening to. And y'all have a good week, okay? Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. And I will see you guys later. Peace.